This podcast is powered by the pros at Pascal Air Plumbing and Electric. Arkansas owned, Arkansas operated. GoPascal.com. Scott, let me start with the news of the week. Uh, you know, everybody's got a thought. What was, what's your thoughts on John Calipari becoming the new basketball coach at Arkansas? I feel about John Calipari how LSU would feel if they hired Dave Van Horn. That's that's my analysis on that. <clears throat> your expectations and your your demands and your expectations would be through the roof because you know uh, he's coming to a place that he can get a national championship, and I, and I think he says that, and and just the same way LSU would feel if they hired Van, Dave Van Horn. He's at the top of the he's at the top of the pile. Uh, I think it's fantastic, Hal, uh, for the school and for the basketball team and for the school in general. I think it's how any fan base would feel if they were able to hire Nick Saban exactly. as their football coach. Yes, exactly. Well, Scott, I, I, I use baseball. <laughs> before we get into the baseball, as long as we're talking about this, you, you're 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 over in the mountain home area. My my sense is the last forty eight hours, and I've always thought this that you know the Razorbacks lift everyone's mood in every walk of life. I mean, you run an insurance business. I'm going to guess the people that you've talked to the last couple of days when the Razorbacks come up, their mood elevates. Um, sure. I think everybody in Arkansas <laughs> is in a good mood right now. Sure they are. I, let me tell you, I've got a brother-in-law who lives in Atlanta, and he just lives and breathes the Razorbacks. Every good thing, every bad thing, you know, the good news, the bad news. And uh, he went from being down in the dumpers, being very critical of everything, to all of a sudden, in one, <laughs> one fell swoop, he's happy. Got new you know, and all of a sudden, the, the football team just got better. You know, all the things <laughs> that are going on there. <laughs> so, it's just, uh, and Sam Pittman is, is the best coach in America, which I love Sam Pittman. I, I can't wait to see what happens this year. Uh, I'm, I'm excited again. But I get excited every year. I'm I'm probably the worst fan ever because I'm not a realist. I mean, I, I drink the Kool-Aid, and I think this is the year – because Chuck, you said a while ago, if you have the facilities, and you have you have the facilities, and you have the fan base, and you, there's no reason you can't get to the top of the dump right from from here. Uh, and then having a coach that comes in known to take teams to the top of the pile to to something that's really, really, really hard to do. Uh, there's no reason it can't happen. So I'm I'm excited. Scott Tabor with us here on the Morning Rush. We're live at Wheels RV, five miles west of exit 72 off of I-49 at Springdale. Our visit with Scott brought to you by Alumni Hall. All right, this weekend, Arkansas is on the road. they got a couple of real stiff road tests coming up, uh, trips to this weekend, obviously, Bama. they got South Carolina on the horizon, got Kentucky down the road. So uh, this is the first of a few big road tests. Uh, tell us about Alabama this weekend, who's 4-8 and eight in league play. Uh, is towards the tail end of the Western Division, and the Hogs have a three-game lead in the West. At this point of the season, records don't really matter. Every team has great players. Alabama has some, some great pitchers and some great hitters, and they're playing at home. Uh, the one thing that always gives us a chance every game, and I think we're starting to see that, as you get deeper in the season, you, you, can, you have some statistics to look at. You know, our team is not a team that's going to come in and just beat you up with the bat. Our team's going, a team that's going to come in, and they're going to always give you a chance to be in the game, uh, not just because we have great starters, but because we have the deepest bullpen I have ever, ever seen. And so our hitters know that. They get down early. They don't panic because they know it's not they get two runs in the, in the second inning. Our team knows that may be all they're going to get. All we have to do is keep pecking away and pecking away and, and finally get to the starter and then get to the bullpen. And, you know, if we score four or five runs, that's generally going to take care of it. Uh, and we've seen that time and time again this year. And, and that's the sign that Van Horn has put together a roster that can win the national championship because that's what it takes is having a deep, deep, deep bullpen. I struggle with trying to figure, you know, we've always talked about the team peaking at the right point in the season. Um, if this team can get dramatically better, it's going to get, be pretty scary. Um, as solid as they're playing right now. Uh, do, where do you see areas? We've talked about Brady Tigert and the kind of that third starting spot. Where, where do you see holes right now as a as with the trained baseball eye that hey, if they can bring all of this together, they could they could go to another level. Timely hitting. Uh, we leave we we have a tendency to leave guys on base, and it's generally in the third game of a of a series, uh, midweek games. You know, it's 
you don't say you're relaxed because every guy that goes up to the plate, he's not relaxing going, you know, I don't care if I get a hit or not. These guys are playing for position. These guys are battling every time they get on the field to see if they're going to be able to get on the field in uh, on the weekend. Nolan Sousa, for example, you know, he has stayed at it. He wasn't getting his opportunities. They knew he was a talent. They didn't know what kind of talent. Uh, he's played his way into the lineup, and I don't know how they can take him out. He's just a dangerous, dangerous, and he plays in the field. I think you could put him anywhere, and he'll be pretty good. Uh, I, the, the, the only, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, 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 you go ahead. Let me uh, finish Well, I was just going to say, the only, like I said, the timely hitting is really, because <clears throat> we have good hitters, we just don't have great hitters. We don't have great powers. You, you know, we have some guys who can go deep, but not, not that often. And so I, I just think the timely hitting is the biggest deal. Hey, you've played on good teams, and you know what I'm talking about. I, I mean, guys are loose. Um, you know, every day's fun. I get the sense that that's kind of where they are right now. How hard is it to keep that? Because, you know, in terms of their play on the field, it seems to me if they can just maintain consistency, I mean, do what sure. they're doing right now continuously, they're going right. to win most of the games they play. But I just wonder when you're on a good team and it's going well, are you waiting on the balloon to burst? I, I mean, how, how do you handle that as a player? Chuck, I think because of the depth that we have, uh, and you're not depending on one or two or three pitchers to to carry the load, and one of them gets sick, or one of them gets hit around a little a little bit, and, uh, somebody's getting to play that somebody else thinks they should be playing. All these guys seem to know their role, and they know they can increase their role by performance, which is the way it should be. Everything should be performance based, so it doesn't look like there's any favorites. Uh, and and the deeper you get into the season. These kids aren't stupid. You know, they've played on good teams all their life. They've been great ball players their whole life. And they can see, and they do, you're right, they seem like they really, really, really enjoy playing. And, and I mean, I got to experience that in 79, and that was a magical year. Uh, we had better talent later on in my career, but, but up and down the lineup. But we had a lot of fun on and off the field. You know, we hung out together all the time. And so you go to the park and you just play. Uh if we had had the depth that this team, I, I wouldn't have. I wouldn't get to pitch on this staff. I'm looking at this staff. I've been riding the pine, raking the, you know, raking the mound. Hey, we'd have uh, seen you in the sixth inning for, you know, maybe three or four batters. That'd have been. It. No, you would have seen me in the eighth inning if we're getting shelled. <laughs> we need to have somebody <laughs> well, get out you there. Are, hey, you're selling around. yourself really short. Care. You are. No, you're I'm, pretty good, I'm telling you, I look at these guys and, uh, you know, I, I've had some new favorites. I love Stone Hewlett. And I love Jake Faraday. I watch Jake Faraday's splitter, which he's just developing and just not getting confidence in it. He has an unhittable pitch. And when he when he can finally garner that, get that ball in the strike zone more or throw it where they think it's going to be a fastball and they can't, because it disappears from, and, and later on you'll get to see it. Uh, I just think that, uh, that at this point of the season, you're worried about injuries and, and worried about, you know, how we're going to get through the next series, you know, and right now we have guys coming back. We have guys getting better during the season, and that's what you need for a championship run. So if things fall right, you know, if we're lucky, if we don't run into a, a buzzsaw somewhere in a regional, or and those things can all happen. And uh, you said it earlier, Chuck, a lot, of, a lot of things have to go right to win a national championship. You know, yeah. timing and, and just it's all there. Kentucky's now 12-1 and one in the league. I don't know how much you've gotten to watch them, but they're clearly a team you've got to pay attention to with just their record. Uh, how good is Kentucky in baseball this year, Scott? They're as good as Arkansas. They're as good as anybody in the nation. They hit the ball. I think they hit the ball better than we do. Uh, there's some really, really good hitters. They're very consistent up and down the lineup. They've got some great arms, but everybody's got some great arms. And you see our games, we go in, we go out. Well, you know, like Alabama this weekend, look at their record and go, well, we should just stomp them. We're not going to stomp anybody unless they just, you know, they kind of give up the ghost in the third game or the second game or they're way down early for a couple of grand slams. All of a sudden they put guys in there that never throw. You know, then you look at a score like we had against North Carolina State that year where, where we beat them by 20 and then we lost the next two. You know, so those those anomalies can happen. But uh, Kentucky's great. Kentucky, it, it'll, it'll come down to their draw uh, postseason. Uh, I'd love to see you know us in Kentucky and, and a couple other SEC teams in the in the World Series. I mean, I think that'd be fantastic because anybody can win it. 
Bet Online is your number one source for all your betting needs. Get the latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for baseball, boxing, golf, and more. Bet Online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wagers, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use our promo code BELIEVE. That's B L E A V. For your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts.